Bungus Jake here with a video going over how to keep your bike in tip-top shape. Whether you're riding it non-stop or you haven't rode in a while, either way you need to go over the basic necessities and make sure that your bike is ready to ride for the next time you hit the trails. So that's what we're going to do. One of the first things you're going to want to do before you even wash your bike after riding, my bike's still dirty, muddy, and ready needing a wash, one of the first things you're going to want to do is to scrub the chain. I'm using a finish line chain scrubber filled with Park Tools Citrus Chain Bright. I use this because this actually works quite well and it is a environmentally friendly cleaner and it is a degreaser that works quite well. My tip for making this a little easier is to shift to one of your one of your smallest rear cogs that way you have some slack in the chain and then quite simply you hold this here you can hold it here at the back to the derailleur and then Turn your chain. You can see it gets everywhere. This is why I recommend to do this before you wash the bike. Okay, I'll speed through that so you don't have to sit through it, but chain's done. I'm dirty. So is the bike, the cranks, everything here got pretty nasty, including the uh, fluid here. As you can see, it, I'll get it in frame. That's pretty gunked up. So it's time now to wash the bike before we move on. Now once you've given time for the chain to dry, or done in my case, I, I actually dried it myself, you can use an airline or simply put a rag around it and spin the, spin the cranks backwards and you'll get most of the fluid out so that you can go ahead and lube this. Now you need to lube this a decent amount of time before you go ride. You don't want to have excess sitting on the chain or it'll attract dirt. That is a common mistake that I've seen people at the trailhead making is they're actually lubing their chain right before they go ride. And all that's going to do is well, oil attracts dirt. So it'll actually get more dirt on your chain and cause it to prematurely wear. So I'm not going to ride for a couple days. What I'm doing now is I'm going to lube this now and it'll have more than enough time to sit in on the chain, penetrate in, and actually provide proper lubrication for the links. I'm using again the little uh, White Lightning No Mesh Chain Luber. You can just simply apply it directly straight out of the bottle. And I'm using the uh, White Lightning Epic Ride Lube. This has become a favorite of mine. It's very cost effective and it works well. I've been using it now for about four or five years. And all you do with this little chain luber, I did a review on my channel. You simply squeeze, squeeze it. It's got a little sponge on the tip and it applies the chain lube all around. And you just keep squeezing and you'll see, if you pay attention, there's some drippage there. That's okay because I'm not gonna go ride right away. And I'll make multiple revolutions of the cranks until I know that I've actually went around the chain a few times. And I probably went around the chain four times now, I'd say. And just to be completely sure, like I said, you don't want to do this before you go ride. I've got a lot of lube sitting on there. I'm going to get some of the excess off. Chain was very clean before I started thanks to that scrubbing. So now I'll get some of the excess off and we'll let that sit. Again, you don't want to lube a chain and then go ride. So that's the next step after washing. Now the next item on the list is to check your tire pressure. I like to run my uh, rear for my local trails at about 32 PSI and my front a little lower for better traction in the corners and plus I have a more aggressive tire up front. I run it at about 28. Now that's just me 
personal preferences and local terrain might vary but that should be the next step and all you need is a good a good floor pump with a gauge on it that you can trust and if you don't have that then make sure if you don't have a pump with a gauge make sure you go get one that is a requirement for anybody who's serious about riding but check your tires make sure they're good to go and then once you do that we'll move on to other things Now the next item on the list is to check for brake drag. Whether you have rim brakes or disc brakes, you need to do this pretty much after every ride. Now all you need to do is pull your brake lever a couple times, pick up the rear of the bike, spin, and listen. Simple as that. No brake drag there. Then we go to the front and do the same. Pick up the bike. You can grab it by the front fork and do it yourself smooth no drag so I'm good now if you if you do find drag all you need to do it's if you do find up. drag loosen your slightly loosen your mounting points and pull the brake lever real hard while holding the brake lever real hard tighten your mounting hardware back up a lot of times that's all it takes to center your caliper up to prevent the drag Try, try that a few times, fine tune it here and there until your brakes are able to run drag free and smoothly. It, that's one of the most annoying things for me on the trail is to hear my brake rotor chirping because it's rubbing just a tiny bit. But remember, a quick trick is just to barely loosen your mounting hardware, hold the brake lever as hard as you can, and then tighten it back up. A lot of times that'll center the caliper. If you got your rotor here, that's enough to center the caliper right up over it and enough enough alignment enough alignment most of the time to cure slight rotor drag something a lot of people forget to do after they've washed their bike is to provide just a drop of lubrication to their suspension seals and suspension pivot points what you gotta do is take I take my same chain lube and I just put a small dab let it run all the way around and then grab the excess with a rag make sure it doesn't run down your clean bike just a drop there remember this is follows the same principle as the chain don't put this on right before you go for a ride do it and let it sit in it'll keep the dust wiper fresh and pliable just do it to both sides and a quick trick is you can put it up on the sanction tube of the fork and let it run down once it runs down and around again wipe off the excess and just let it sit there overnight that is a quick trick there and you can also do the same on a number of points. You can take it on your suspension pivots if they use bushings. Up here they do. On the inside and outside. There's the inside and the outside. I have sealed bearings at other points, but that is a bushing there. And I also have a bushing right where the shock mounts. So there, and on both sides of the shock hardware, as well as there. That helps to prevent squeaks and creaks, and I can also do it at the bottom of the shock mount. And again, do not do this before you go for a ride. Do this when you're preparing your bike like I'm doing now. Now, outside of suspension setup, which you should do this, you should do that, you know, somewhat routinely, but not as routinely as anything else. Next thing you should do is to take a look over all your hardware. Just grab a, a multi-tool or an Allen wrench set and go over your commonly used hardware, like say the suspension pivots that I just went over. Gently check them. If you have a, a torque wrench that actually can measure how they're supposed to be tightened, then that's perfect. But if not, just go around. Don't crank on them super hard, but just go to all your pivot points and give them a little check. See right there, I got a slightly loose one right there. So let's crank that down. Not ultra hard. Something that you can do by hand with a small tool won't exceed most hardware limits. Just do that all over the bike 
everywhere. Double check your hardware, make sure that you don't have anything loose. That way you avoid the problem of having something come off and fall off on the trail and then possibly leave you stranded walking back. That's just a number of tips of how to keep your bike running in tip-top shape. This is Mongoose Jake, and I hope you enjoy this, and hopefully it helps somebody out. Thanks for watching.